first, capturing those emissions from our power stations is seen as one way forward in keeping the lights on without destroying our planet. But what do you do with them once you've stopped them spewing into the atmosphere? Tom Heap's been investigating the battle to capture carbon. One storm is a direct result of global warming. Potentially warming. cause far greater disruption to dealing with increased storm damage, increased flooding. Is breaking up more rapidly than expected. Scenes like these are becoming more and more common. Natural disasters which many scientists fear are being worsened by climate change. To reduce that risk, there's an urgent push to cut our carbon emissions. The trouble is, we still use billions of tonnes of fossil fuels to supply around 90% of the world's commercial energy. Coal-fired power plants like this one in Scotland need 4 million tonnes of coal every year, and that puts out over 8 million tonnes of carbon dioxide out into the atmosphere. But with the government pledging to cut carbon emissions by 80% by 2050, that just can't go on. The solution, they say, is something called carbon capture and storage, or CCS. A term so widely used in energy circles, it's now got its own entry in the Oxford Dictionary of English. Well, it may look simple on paper, just capture the carbon and bury it underground. The problem is, it's nowhere near ready yet to be rolled out on a commercial scale. Longanet in Scotland is one of the biggest power stations in Europe and like all other coal-fired power plants, the CO2 waste created here is pumped directly into the atmosphere. So what we have here is one of the, uh, the Longanet furnaces. This is currently uh, on load and it's burning around about 250 tonnes. <laughs> it's incredibly warm here, I can oh, no. feel the heat even here. Oh, absolutely, and if, uh, if Mark, if you wouldn't mind opening the door, we can actually see inside the furnace. Oh, <laughs> it kind of knocked you back. <laughs> well, we're actually burning 250 tonnes of coal an hour in this one unit. So that's what's actually heating the water, driving the turbines, make the electricity. That's right, and the amount of heat transfer in there is, is astonishing. We don't want to let it out, better shut it up, I think. <laughs> this is just one of four units at this power station alone that's burning these quantities of coal. A thousand tonnes of coal an hour being burned here. What does that mean in terms of carbon dioxide? One tonne of coal produces approximately two or 2.2 tonnes of of carbon dioxide. So uh, your thousand tons of coal is actually producing around 2,000 tons of CO2 an hour. And at the moment, all that 2,000 tons of CO2 an hour is going up the chimney into our atmosphere. And, and the challenge is to, to develop the technology to capture that CO2 and bury it safely underground. Here at Longanet, they're now trialling the first part of that process with the only carbon capture test unit in the country. So you've got your flue gas with carbon dioxide here, but coming out of there, it's without the carbon dioxide. How are you doing it? Well, we call it a, a shower in a tower. You've got a, chem a chemical showering down um, with, the, with the flue gas actually going up. Yeah. And, and as the two meet, the, the carbon dioxide sticks to the special chemical. Right. And in doing so, it's removed from the flue gas. Sounds simple enough, but once the carbon's been captured, what happens next? We then put that mixture into the second of the two towers, which is the, is, is the stripper, and we heat it up. And in heating it up, we split this, the carbon dioxide away from the special chemical, right. and that carbon dioxide can be pumped and compressed uh, and sent to the uh, central North Sea for storage. So in the end, the carbon dioxide from here will go out into the North Sea, you hope? That's right. The big problem is the colossal cost in terms of the energy needed to make the process work on a commercial scale. So what are the problems you've got to overcome to make this really work? It would take around about 25% of the energy of the power plant for the capture plant. That's the, that's the issue, that's, what we, that's the challenge. It's a challenge that has to be met. Without CCS, the government says no new coal-fired plants will be built. And with some existing power stations coming to the end of their useful lives, that could lead to a huge shortfall in our energy needs. But according to some, there's another danger too. There's no doubt that in theory, carbon capture and storage can greatly reduce the emissions from a coal-burning power station. In practice, it's likely to be a rather different story. And the danger here is that by accepting new coal-burning power stations on the understanding that there will be carbon capture and storage, we run the great risk of having the coal-burning 
without the carbon capture and storage because it's very expensive and it's difficult, there's technical issues to be resolved, there's enormous financial issues to be resolved and the danger is that governments will see this further down the line as just too difficult to do and they'll say when we've got the go-ahead for the coal burning power stations they're part of our energy plan, part of our energy security, we can't junk them now, it's too late so we'll just have to go ahead without the capture and storage. If carbon capture happens, steam from power stations will still be a familiar sight. It's the carbon dioxide we can't see that will be trapped before escaping into the atmosphere. So, once they've captured it, where are they going to store all that carbon dioxide? Well, possibly in rocks like this. This particular outcrop is in Nottingham, but the same sandstone extends all the way out below eastern England and under the North Sea and they think it could make the perfect store for all our unwanted carbon dioxide. When it's compressed, carbon dioxide turns into a liquid. So how will storage actually work? I know a man in the cellar of this pub who can tell me. It's an amazing place, Sam, but uh, why have you brought me down here? It's a fantastic network of tunnels, isn't it? And uh, they've all been dug by hand into this uh, quite soft and porous rock and the reason that I've brought you down here is because this is an example of a typical reservoir rock that we might be able to store carbon dioxide in. So you're talking about actually storing carbon dioxide in rock like this, in the actual tiny spaces which I can't really see with the naked eye. Yes, that's right, yeah. Will that really work? Yes, it will and um, I've brought along a small core sample of this rock here, uh -huh. which um, I'm going to demonstrate it's, uh, the, the fact that it's porous and permeable. If we pour a little bit of beer on it, you'll see it soak into the rock, uh, into the pore spaces. <laughs> I like a bit of pub science. So, for the sake of this experiment, beer is carbon dioxide? That's right, yes. OK. Let's give it a go. We'll pour that onto the rock. And you can see that it quickly soaks into the pore spaces in the rock. Well, doesn't it just? Whoa, that's real time and it's gone. That's right. It's, uh, you know, there's nothing dripping off there, is there? The porosity is about 20%, so a fifth of the uh, entire volume of that sample could be filled with uh, water and gases. And luckily for us in the UK, many of the rocks beneath the seabed around our coastline are just like this. Geologists believe they could be used for storing up to 150 billion tonnes of carbon dioxide, more than the rest of Europe combined. The question is, will it happen? How confident are you that this is going to work, it is going to be practical? I've got every confidence it's going to happen. I am so sceptical about the capture and storage bit being tacked onto the coal burning bit. That, um, and my real fear is that we get left with this without the VAT. We, we do not have the CCS, but we still have the coal burning with the devastating implications for future climate breakdown that that involves. So the debate over carbon capture and storage is pretty hot. Some see it as just an excuse to carry on burning the same old dirty fossil fuels. For others, it's the only low-carbon way of keeping the lights on for the next couple of decades. Well, whatever you think, if we're going to get the Earth to swallow up what comes out of there, it won't come cheap and we'll all pay the bill.